Hey everyone, this is my latest Dan Meyer project. I call it the Hybrid VIC Controller. And I've been working on it off and on for the last couple of months. I probably finished about two weeks ago. The whole purpose of this is to replace all the individual components and instruments I had before to drive the VIC coil and condense them down into one unit and make it more portable. So here you can see I've got two oscilloscopes, two frequency generators, a voltmeter, and I've got several switches and potentiometers. On the side, I got my VIC connections. I've got this connection here labeled cell. This actually connects to a pickup coil that sits between the VIC and the water fuel cell. Now here on the back, this whole thing is run by an 18 volt Ryobi power tool battery, so it's all cordless. I've also got a 5 amp fuse and a fan. And here I've got two BNC connections. These are actually extensions, so that if I want to look at the waveforms on a bigger and better oscilloscope, I can connect it there. Nothing on this side. You might have heard that snap when I picked it up, though. The feet are actually suction cups that are adjustable. Now, when I first had this, I noticed it slid around too much. It's really lightweight, so the suction cups kind of help keep it in place, as you can see. Now, this whole case, I designed and 3D printed the material, all the gray and the black as well as all TPU. The gray material, you know, this is pretty stiff stuff. The shore hardness is 98A. So it's stiff enough to hold its shape, but it's still flexible enough to where it'll never crack or break. Really good for a case like this, in my opinion. And the black is just the standard TPU you would probably buy. I think the shore hardness is 70A on that one. So inside, I've got two power supplies and my latest VIC drive circuit. We'll take a look at those first. All I've got to do to pull these side panels off is remove these two thumb screws. All right, so once the thumb screws are out, I just pull it out like that. I'll take this side off. See my connections there. So we look here, first of all, hard to see, but I've got a power supply here and here. This one's a five volt power supply. That runs both the oscilloscopes. The other one's set to about 14 volts, and that powers everything else inside here. Now on this side, where my connections are, I've got my latest hybrid VIC driver, and we'll talk about that now. All right, so here's version one, version two, and version three of my hybrid VIC driver. First version, I just wanted to make it simple and functional. It worked pretty well. I did have one mistake on the bottom, so I decided it's a good opportunity to make it better. Version 2, I added JST connectors, an LED on indicator, a 3 amp fuse, and a test point to look at the waveform across the primary coil. Now, on the third version, I decided I wanted a digital readout of the primary coil voltage. I also wanted to make the gate time adjustable when the gate period is high. So I went back to the breadboard, made a few changes. And this is version 3. Turned out really well. My oscilloscope were 2 volts per division. Showing about 4 volts there, 4 volts on the uh, voltmeter. Let's go up to 6 volts on the oscilloscope, see what the voltmeter reads. There it goes 6 volts, and I'll go to 8. There we go. Finally, 10 volts. Alright, so one other thing I need to point out here, if you haven't noticed, each oscilloscope has a switch associated with it. That allows me to view various points in the circuit without having to have multiple oscilloscopes. Initially, my plan to, was to have something much bigger where I'd have four oscilloscopes on it showing everything I needed to see at the same time, but it was just too big, and uh, my 3D printer wouldn't print anything that big either. So, I decided to go with switches instead. So, if we turn this on, immediately you'll see our test point oscilloscope is showing the gate signal. I can switch that to the pulse, which is a higher frequency, or the signal going out to the VIC. Now, first of all, we'll look at the gate signal. And here on our gate uh, frequency generator, you can see as we adjust the duty cycle, the signal changes right along with it. Adjust the frequency. Signal changes again as it's supposed to. If we go to the pulse, change my 
time base here so we can see it better. And here's my pulse uh, frequency generator. Again, I control the duty cycle there. Frequency. The next thing we need to look at here is the gate switch. The gate switch actually determines what signal is going to the primary coil. Put this on primary right now. You'll see it's set to the pulse, which is the same signal we're seeing here. If I change it to the gate, you'll notice now I'm seeing the gate signal going across the VIC if I had the VIC connected. I go to V gate high, what you'll see now is actually a high signal during the gate time. And I can adjust that high signal with this potentiometer here. Now you can see it coming down. Let's look now at the V gate pulse, and I'll explain what that is. And the VGA pulse is turned all the way down. You just get a gated um, pulse train. So during the gate time, your signal's low. If I adjust this, you've probably seen this in my previous videos, where now I'm adding the pulsing at any amplitude I want, all the way up to the peak amplitude. Now this uh, potentiometer here controls my primary coil voltage, which you see here. And I can change that almost to any voltage I want, really. I think the lowest I can go is about 2.5 volts. And the highest it goes with the voltage I've got it set at is about 11.4. So see if I want 8 volts exactly, I can pretty much get 8 volts. If I want, say, 9.5 volts, I get 9.5 volts. If I want 10 volts, I want 11 volts. Those are the signals available at the VIC. We can have it just on the pulse, the gate, gated pulse train with adjustable high gate period, a gated pulse train with a low gate period, or gated pulse train with a variable amplitude pulsing during the gate period. Another thing that's really nice about this setup is that I can turn it off and it's got a memory to it. So whatever I left it at when I turn it back on, whether it be a week or a day later, will still be where I left it at. This thing here, all I've got to do is connect my VIC coil Connect my pickup coil here. Turn it on. Right now I've got it set to 5 volts across the primary coil, as you can see. Look at the cell waveform here. See if it'll pick it up. It may not. There we go. Put our signal going out. So you can see now our amplitude's increased and got back down. So we've hit uh, probably not resonance. This BIC I forgot to mention is not set up correctly. I'm going to have to redo. Uh, probably redesign the whole thing. I need a new jig. I may even end up going with a different core. The one last thing I just want to say is if you look back at Stan Meyer's old equipment, you know, that he used in the late 70s and 80s, you compare it to this, it's a huge difference. You know, back then his gauges were all analog gauges. He was using these big, heavy pieces of uh, test equipment. You know, they all had to be plugged in. They provided very little information. You know, a lot of his tuning and things like that, he was pretty much doing blind. Now, I can view my test points, 
my waveform between the VIC circuit and the water fuel cell, my gate and my pulse frequencies and duty cycles, as well as my primary coil voltage, all in real time. Feel free to leave your comments. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care.